Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. <clears throat> What's up, YouTube? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Race to 100. I'm Neil Batang. I am Rick Thorsell, and we are on episode number uh, 37 right now. We're on episode 37. 37. So, uh, 37. Man, w I feel like we've been covering a lot of uh, sad topics recently. Yeah, but yet yeah. another one hit the news, and, and Neil had mentioned that this was a pretty big deal. So, yeah. Well, and, uh, uh, what's going on? So today, we are going to pay homage to another former professional fighter who unfortunately passed on Monday by the name of Kevin Ferguson of Miami, Florida. AKA Kimbo Slice. Slice. He was known for bringing backyard brawling, um, recorded backyard brawling to fruition. People have been backyard brawling for years, but he was one of the first uh, in 2006 or over 10 years ago to kind of have it be broadcasted, publish it on YouTube for people to watch and go like, damn, like. This is crazy. Now, I'm not too familiar with this. What What is backyard brawling? So, pretty much, Rick's, it's bare-knuckled, anything goes, I guess not anything goes because they have rules, but it's bare-knuckled fighting. So, it's, 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 it's just like raw, it, like... Fighting. Basically, you go in the backyard, there's a group of guys, you bet on one guy, you bet on another, whoever wins, you split the winnings between the two, and they broadcast you guys fighting each other bare knuckled. Um, Sounds like a little like uh, Fight Club. It, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 act, it actually is Fight Club, but it's recorded, and he was the one to start posting his stuff. He was dominating the backyard brawling. And this wasn't illegal or anything like that. There are definitely some some laws. They 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 broke some laws, and and definitely were fine. There were fines uh, to be paid, and and they were reprimanded for their actions. But I think their love of the game and the money they were making from YouTube for doing this was able to cover all that. So, so, okay, so, but about Kimbo Slice himself, you had mentioned that he was <clears throat> an important figure to you and the black community on a wider level. What makes him a, a role model that deserves? Kimbo um, Slice wasn't, wasn't a, a role model necessarily to me, but the reason we're taking the death of Kimbo Slice and using it um, as a topic on Race to 100 Basically, the question is, how does the death of Kimbo Slice pertain to what we're doing with Race to 100, mm -hmm. right? Kimbo Slice was very, very influential in the projects of Perrine, Florida. It is a ghetto of Miami. It's one of, like, the hardest ones okay. in the United States. And he turned that community around and gave them hope. And several others followed in his footsteps through backyard brawling and eventually becoming UFC fighters, such as Dada 5000. That whole industry group act of backyard brawling, backyard brawlers becoming UFC fighters and being able to earn a living. Mm -hmm. Provide for their fans so, so through he, this crazy he, he, he barbaric act. Focus yes, starts their, their energy into something a little exact, more constructive. A little more constructive. Constrained. Exactly. All of that, as crazy Ricks as that sounds, Kimball Slice is at the foundation of that. And mm -hmm. he, I have a lot of friends, a lot of Haitian friends, <laughs> Caribbean American friends that live lived in Miami and talked about the the really big impact that he had on those around him. He he put on for the community. And I think the other aspect too is that he was really young when he died. He 42, 42, 40, 42 years past, 42 okay. years of age unfortunately. I mean if you look at like a lot of the stuff Kimbo Slice did like he I mean a lot of like fighting tutorials for kids who didn't necessarily know how to fight mm -hmm. like how to use items around you in the hood as exercise equipment if you don't have time to go to a gym or the money to do that I mean he was just um an internet sensation mm -hmm. for inner city people, not just kids, but for anyone in the inner city kids to look up to and, and, and almost a role model for. I mean, again, you've got plenty of internet backyard brawlers from that neighborhood in Miami that have gone to have successful UFC careers. His son has also followed in his footsteps mm -hmm. on his first fight as well. So, again, he kind of changed the atmosphere 
and what the meaning was to be from Paragon, Florida. Now you were talking a little bit about him being a role model for the black community and how, and we were talking a little <clears throat> bit beforehand about how uh, an individual like him is important for a community uh, like the one that he helped mm -hmm. because role models like him aren't necessarily as common as perhaps they should be. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know how, how you, how you uh, what your take on that would be. My take on that? What would be my take on that? What would be my take on the importance of because even for something because uh, you know in first yeah for somebody like myself yeah. I see I see a street fighter I, I'm not one who he encourages stole, violence I I, I so understand I'm like torn well, check this that. check this out y'all let's check this out his school. his story his story right it, it epitomizes the American dream you can go from nothing to something overnight. Mm -hmm. That's why people love, not necessarily Rocky, but Sylvester Stallone's story so much. That's why people love Arnold Schwarzenegger's story so much. That's why people love Mark Zuckerberg's story so much because this guy was massively successful and it happened overnight. Literally, Rick's within the snap of a finger. He was a regular dude that was just backyard brawling. He came up with the most basic idea to have his fights be filmed. They put it on the internet and they went viral. Mm -hmm. All of that viral status led him to a UFC career. Yeah. So he, it wasn't even like he was. He wasn't a guy who had been fighting professionally for his entire life to make it to that level. He was a big name, top seller off of internet fights. So really, his is a, a lesson of being able to understand what your talents and abilities yes. are and be able yeah. to, to utilize them. And, and the reality that it doesn't really matter who you are, if you understand who you are as a person, exactly. what, what you excel at, yeah. if you embrace that and keep working at it, yeah. good things happen. And this is something I've been saying, Rick's my entire life. This is something I tell to people I know. We, we live in America. We live in the greatest country in the world. It's one where you could get by on hard work, confidence, and perseverance. And inner city black kids need to hear that especially. And the story of Kimbo Slice contributes to that I just said. Well, so, it's a powerful message. So yeah, let us know what you guys think. Uh, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe if Kimbo Slice impacted your life in any way, if you're into the whole UFC thing, how did he influence you? Because he influenced, he, Kimbo mm -hmm. Slice, I mean, fighting's big, professional fighting's big, yeah. Miss, Miss Martial Arts is a thing, and someone like Kimbo Slice had a, had a major impact on those who are professional fighters. So, with that being said, like I said, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, anything else you want to add, Rick? We will catch you next time on the race to 100. Peace, peace.